Speaking of which, if you're lucky enough to have a garden, then take a leaf, see what I did there, out of BP fan George the Gardener's book. Check this out. Welcome to my garden. And this is my gardening buddy, Buddy. Now it's springtime, which means it's the perfect season for growing veggies, flowers, and getting your garden ready for the warmer weather ahead. So, let's get started, shall we? One of the best things about springtime is that it can turn your garden into a wildlife haven. One of the best ways to do this is to have a pond. And in my pond at the moment, I've actually got a frog spawn, which will eventually turn into little frogs. One of the best ways to make your pond wildlife friendly is to build it with lots of different levels. For example, a beachy area where animals can bath in and also get out of the fall in. You've also got to have wildlife friendly plants. Oh, yeah, I've got one. And here's just a few of the species that I found. We think this is a dragonfly larvae, damselfly larvae, and these two are some mini tadpoles, which is really nice. Now, you don't have to have a massive pond in your garden. You can quite as easily use a shallow basin, as long as it's got stones on the outside and on the inside so that animals can get in and get back out again. But you want it now, don't you? Growing your own veg is amazing. And two plants that we've got in our garden at the moment is onions and shallots. Another great veg that you can grow is peas. And you can start them off in toilet rolls. And then when they start to get a bit bigger, you can transfer them to a veg bed and the toilet roll will actually decompose. But if you haven't got enough room to have a veg bed, I'm going to show you how to grow an amazing vegetable in a container. Now what you've got to do is you're going to get about four inches of compost and you're going to put them into your trug. Then you're going to get your chitted seed potatoes. Now chitted just means that they've grown a little bit. And what you're going to do is you're going to place them in the soil with the grown bit pointing up at the sky. Then what you're going to do is you're going to cover it with more compost. And then what you'll notice is it'll start to grow a bit. Then you're going to cover it with even more soil. And the deeper it is, the bigger the potatoes will grow. Then once the plant on top has started to die away, you can search through the compost, a bit like a treasure hunt, and you'll find potatoes that will look a bit like this. Right, we're all planted up and we'll soon have chips in no time. At this time of year, your garden can become full of colour. This isn't just pretty to look at, it can also provide food for early bees. For example, this Pullman area provides a really good food source for queen bees when they first come out of hibernation. That'll certainly get them buzzing. Welcome to my greenhouse. Now it may be only small, but it does the job well. Now, greenhouses are great all year round and they're particularly good in spring for growing things like seedlings. And you can use absolutely anything to grow seedlings in. A crabbing bucket, an egg box, an old plastic bottle, some coffee tins, even a teapot will do. Just remember, it's got to have holes in the bottom for drainage. Now, we've actually grown basil in coffee tins. And even though we only started them a few weeks ago, they're already starting to grow. When basil is fully grown, it looks like this. Now, basil and coffee tins is great because you're recycling old tins and you're not using plastic pots. But basil is also great for flavouring things like bruschetta, which is just a posh word for tomato and basil on toast. Worms, a gardener's best friend. Whether you have a garden or not, growing flowers and veg is a great way to feel good. So if you do get up to any gardening, please write to us at Blue Pizza and tell us all about it. Well, I'm off to plant some more spuds. I'm sorry, but I absolutely love George. I apologise. I think he is the best. I love him too, so 